What up guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to hide your arm bar. So here's an idea for you. Um, sometimes when I am out and about, you know, going around town, uh, if I see one of my students, instead of like coming up to them, tapping them on their shoulders, say, hey bro, what's up? I'll try to sneak up on them. Like one of my students in particular, Tim, if I see him out like at a grocery store, I'll try to sneak up in the aisles and I'll try to come up behind him and put him in a rear naked choke real fast. Now obviously I don't finish it or hold it, but like you just see how, see if I can get it under. The, the, the goal for me is like, if I can make it all the way up underneath their neck, that's what I'm looking for, right? And so I've done that before and then the people at the grocery store are looking at me, jumping on someone's back to try to choke them and getting super worried. Then we start laughing and hugging afterwards, right? But one of the interesting things about that is as soon as my arm touches like Tim or any of my students' necks, their shoulders haunch up really quickly, right? As soon as you go for it, they're, they're up here like this. And that's something to think about. And again, I'm gonna tie this into arm bars in a second, but that's something to think about because there are these places on our body where we develop the sensitivity, where again, if anything even comes close, we respond to it. And so we're gonna use that idea with our arm bars, and I'll show you kind of the points where most people's like arms get really sensitive and where they begin to defend. And then we can use that understanding to then work around it to set up our arm bars a little bit more stealthily. We're gonna make sure we set up our arm bars in a way where they don't see them coming. I'll give you an idea to chew on and hopefully Guys enjoy the video. All right, guys, so let's take a look at this position to kind of talk about this particular area I'm gonna bring up. So, for instance, let's say we're gonna set up an arm bar from guard, like a basic arm bar. We go in, we grab the back of the tricep, grab here, boom, boom, go for arm, right? Perfectly fine, not a bad arm bar, fundamentally sound, right? That said, the thing that a lot of times happens is a lot of our arm bars early on are set up with this cross grip on the back of the, the arm here. For instance, if we go to mount. All right, so let's take a look at mount. So like if I'm in mount position, obviously I wouldn't be sitting up like this, but if we're in a mount position, one of the basic common grips is we would get here, we would pull the arm up to the side, begin to shift, and then we would begin to set up our arm bar, right? And again, what does that start with? It starts with a really good snag on the back of the tricep. So again, what happens when we do this? As soon as we grab the back here of the arm, the back of that tricep there with a really hard grip, what does that tell them? It tells them we're going for an arm bar. So I'm gonna give you some ideas to chew on and we're gonna use it from, uh, or use a couple different arm bars to illustrate the idea. And then again, you can sort of piece those together as you will and you can kind of think about this idea. So going back to the guard position, one of my black belts and training partners back in the day, Chad, he had a beautiful arm bar that he was catching me with a bunch years ago. This is, hell, this is probably 12, 14 years ago, back when he was a kid. He was like 15 years old or something, you know, catching with arm bars. And what he would do a lot of times is he would catch a very loose grip on the back of the gi here. This was a, mostly a gi arm bar that he was doing. You could do it without the gi, but he would catch it right here. And he would get this really loose grip on either the back of the, the sleeve up here right here or even down here, but he would be super loose. So right now, Hayden would tell you that his arm doesn't really feel that threatened. I don't have a hard grip here, right? And so Chad would be working on collars here and then would immediately begin to shift. Now, once you would notice that he was shifting into the arm bar, if he tried to pull out, he's going against this grip that he has waiting for it and he could go right into it, right? So again, what was he trying to do? He was trying to keep his arm here and stop it from being able to go back and he accomplished that with, instead of going this here, he grabbed this. And again, it's the same idea as before, just a different grip. Another one that I like, and this is one that I do a lot of times, is if I feel anybody rest their arms anywhere here at all, what I'll do is I'll start to kind of play with my forearm over top of their wrist here, okay? So again, instead of going this route where I'm gonna pull here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play really loose here. So my arm, literally, I just lay it here for a second and I'll be like, begin to do stuff. I will open up and get underneath the leg and then as soon as I'm making this angle here, I will begin to clamp down at this point and I can start to shift into diamond guard and go for the arm bar. But again, as soon as I do this, if he begins to try to pull, this becomes pretty difficult to do so and we can get into an arm bar. Now again, he didn't see the setup coming because what are we doing? We're setting it up on the wrist rather than this. It's not as strong as this one or this one, but again, when we get into it, if we're here, we're playing around, again, making that, a sh that quick shift or adjustment, or if we're gonna go to the diamond guard, being able to hook and shave, we can go right into it, right? So that's another setup. All right, one last one, guys, to kind of give you another idea. So from here, I do this like shotgun arm bar here, where I go here, boom, step it over and get the finish, right? If you guys have watched the channel, you know it's one of my favorite ones. And if you guys have gone to some of my seminars, I may have taught that to you. So check this out, same thing here. When I get into this position, I notice this pretty early. If I grabbed onto the opponent's tricep 
to set this up, like if I was in this position, I grabbed their tricep, he would start fighting like crazy to get out of the position. It was really hard to hold. But what I noticed was, is that if I got up here higher up on the shoulder, either cupping the shoulder or the gi, that it almost felt like I was just holding pressure. He wasn't nearly as worried. It's like he didn't, it didn't give him the same red flags that this would give it. So from here, I could go in, set up my move, and then as soon as I'm setting back, we could slide back to their elbow and get the finish. So the idea is simple, right? When you're going for arm bars, there's nothing wrong with grabbing the tricep, plenty of good setups like that. But just an idea to chew on for the day, if you're trying to set up an arm bar and you notice people start to stop it, in particular, if it's like an arm bar you've used many times and they're stopping it, take a look at your setup and figure if there's a different way to set that same thing up, right? Again, as I showed you with the armbar, there's several different ways to set up with the armbar, and obviously you knew these, but they get away from that one main grip at the back of the tricep, which doesn't make the person's arm feel as threatened, so they're not nearly as worried about it. And again, for pretty much any move, there's a way to do this, right? There's a setup that gets commonly used, people start to respond to it because they intuitively feel it, so then if you want to change the move and make the move more effective, one of the easiest ways to do that is change the setup. So just an idea for you guys, hopefully that helps. Talk to you guys next time.